out of any interview I'm ever going to do for the rest of my life, this is one where I know for a fact I'm going to pronounce the name properly. I am joined, no joke, by James Lynch. Jamie Lynch, I believe is what you're called. Uh, you are going to be fighting Cesar Gonzalez, Cage Warriors 139, June 10th. Jamie, how's it going, man? It's going well. It's going well. I'm excited to, to do this interview, especially it's crazy enough for somebody with the exact same name. Exactly. So. Exactly. I first actually wanted to start there. When did you become aware of me? Because I'll tell you on my end, um, I was out doing something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, you were fighting and I got all these people tagging me on Twitter and I have no idea why. And I look it up and there's some guy uh, yourself. I shouldn't say some guy, a very talented fighter, I should say, uh, with the exact same name as me. So that's when I found out. When did you find out? This was recently, actually. Mm, I probably found out a few years ago. Uh, oh, was, really? OK. Yeah. When I was fighting, I, I would try to Google my name to show people my fights or whatever. And, you know, I, did, I don't know, I don't know when exactly it was, but there was a, there was a time where you, where you would pop up and not me. And I was like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> um, so I, I clicked on some of your stuff and I was like, well, that's crazy. There's, there's an interview named James Lynch uh, yeah. out there in the MMA scene. So, I mean. I just thought it was crazy. So it, it's, it's a small world. And, and you know, apologies if, if you've been tagged by me, uh, but, you know, people are talking about me and you've been tagged or whatever. Uh, apologies for that. I mean, there's nothing we can do. We got the same name. Was part of you kind of annoyed, let's be honest, at the beginning, kind of like, hey, when I'm looking at my name, I, this other guy's coming up. Yeah, I mean, because it's kind of overshadowing me. You know, I got this right. big MMA reporter or shattering me and I'm trying to come up through my career and I can't even Google my name to show my friends what's going on. So Yeah, well, wait till the algorithm sees this uh, interview, man. Like, it's they're going to get yeah. so confused right now. But uh, yeah, glad no, we could no, join no, forces excited. here. And uh, you were kind of telling me off air, you you go by Jamie. I know you've I've, there's James as well. What do you prefer? What's sort of your, your, your go-to? So I actually go by Jamie because uh, just like you, uh, my name is James Lynch, but I also have my dad's name is James Lynch and his dad's name is James. So I'm James Victor Lynch the third. Um, so I've always gone by Jamie because my dad kind of claimed the name James and Jim. So okay. it's, it's kind of one of those one oddball things, you know, do you go by Jimmy? Do you go by Jamie? Do you go by James? So it just depends on the setting. And I guess, you know, who you are as a person, person. I, I agree. Um, quick backstory. Most people don't know this. I'm going to break a bit of news here. Uh, I used to be called Jamie when I was growing up. Up until I went to university, I was called Jamie. If you look on my report card, all that stuff, it says Jamie. But I spelt it with an IE. You spell it with a Y, correct? was listening is j-a-m-e-y there's yeah. also i-e floating all around out there so yeah gotta gotta get it right there yeah no yeah, i just so you, you know I, how it is yeah i was just telling you i changed it when i got to university because i don't know i just felt like it sounded more adult i guess than jamie no no nothing against the jamies out there but yeah uh, yeah i just stuck with james and it's it's sort of stuck since and I, I think it actually rolls off the tongue a little bit better james lynch as opposed to jamie lynch i don't know just my thoughts yeah, on well, that I but yeah and and the other cool thing is like you're you're from the you're from the West Coast or at least you live there now uh, in California correct and I I grew up I'm I born born and raised and moved back here in, in 2018 I live in Vancouver Canada so uh, pretty crazy that there's two James Lynches on on the West Coast here which is uh, which is nuts but anyways enough about the Spider Man meme uh, let, let's get to uh, you man where did this journey start for you uh, how did you initially get involved in combat sports yeah so I initially got involved in combat sports just like a lot of uh, people I started wrestling at a young age. Um, Russell had actually went up to a junior college, was wrestling there for a while, and then I didn't really know what I was doing, so I joined the Navy. Um, so I was in the Navy for a little bit, but this kind of brings me back into how I got into the MMA. So fast forward for about a year, I was on a deployment. Um, and when I was on a deployment, there were some guys uh, that were doing jujitsu on the flight deck, you know, just kind of passing time when you're just kind of just floating around, not doing much. So I went out there and I saw them doing jujitsu. You know, knowing in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I wrestled. They don't even know it. So I'll probably go out, these, go out there and, you know, tap these guys. No problem. I went out there, did my fair share of tapping, did my fair share of tapping out. And that, and that was kind of all, all she wrote. So as soon as we pulled back into port, um, I was actually in Washington State, which is near you in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, I went to this place called Charlie's Combat Club with Charlie Pearson. Oh, my um, gosh. Miranda Granger's gym. Or she trains yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, oh, wow. Exactly. Okay. Same super gym. small world. Okay. Yeah. So it just so happened to be across the street from the Naval base um, in Everett, Washington. So I went in there. I trained for a few weeks. I asked them about fighting. They're like, okay, you know, kind of pump the brakes. Let's, you know, train for a little bit and we'll see you can get your fight. And then about two or three weeks later, they set me up for my first amateur fight, did a little ground and pound, got the W and then just been a whirlwind since. Interesting. What brought you to California? So I, I was originally from here. Um, I lived up in Sacramento, but I, when I was in the Navy, I got stationed up in Washington. Oh, um, gotcha. So when I got out of the Navy, I moved back to California, specifically San Diego, because we pull, we used to pull in here a lot because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the shipyards down here, they do a lot of work. So we pulled in here and then I just kind of fell in love with the area. I don't know if you've been here, 
but it's, I tell you, like, it's I, well, Seattle, Se- Seattle. Oh, actually, so I live in Vancouver, Canada. Seattle's only three yeah. hours away. I've gone there a handful of times as a kid. And then I went there, you know, obviously before the pandemic. So, uh, yeah, that's I know Washington State really well. And here's another crazy thing. I mean, not quite the same thing, but I went to a boarding school growing up. So Navy, you know, boarding school, another similarity here. So I'm all about the discipline, just like you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, no, I've been to Vancouver a few times, too, because like you said, it's not a far drive. So I went yeah. up there and just, you know, um, actually, when I was in the Navy, we pulled into Victoria Island. Oh, yeah, Victoria. Yeah, on, on Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, on Vancouver. Island. I, yeah, so whatever it is. But yeah. so I've had my fair share of uh, Canadian things. There you go. Well, that's good. Um, and uh, I was also going to ask, uh, like, at what moment did you know that this was like something you wanted to pursue as a career? You talked about the experience in, you know, in the military, or in the Navy, I should say. Um, like, did you know then or what would like what sort of led you on this path? So so really what happened is I don't I mean, you could probably look at my topology and see there was a huge break. So what was happening is I had a couple of amateur fights and moved down here. You know, when you first get out of the Navy, you're trying to get settled. So I was trying to get settled in. I was starting college. I was still training. But I was still trying to, you know, fulfill what I'm, I don't know, supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So I was training and going to college. I would have a fight here and there. And then fast forward a little bit, I kind of did a, I did a huge layoff. It was one, it was hard for, there's not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of shows going on in Southern California, which is kind of crazy, you would think, because it's supposed to be like the Mecca. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really getting on any shows. And then I went to a uh, PA school. I don't know if you know what that is, physician assistant school. And then the school so rigorous, there's no time for any sort of training. Right. When I got out, kind of fell back in love with it. You know, the pandem- pandemic kind of gave me that opportunity again. Um, and then I knew, you know, I'm getting older, so it's just time to hit the ground running. So I'm going all in. And I'm, you know, this last year I've been just taking fight after fight after fight. And I, can, and I want to continue to do that until I get to the next level. So I say after the pandemic is when it really kind of clicked. Like, hey, you got to do this. Now's the time. You're good. And do you have like a part-time job right now? Or how are you sort of paying the bills uh, along with fighting? I, I, I mean, it, so I do, it's not really a part-time job. It's a full-time job, but so I work as a, uh, a PA. So what a PA is, is basically we go to like a medical type school um, and we treat, we prescribe, you know, we do prescriptions, we order imaging and I see patients on a regular basis. So the physician, um, so you have to work with a physician. Uh, they don't have to see every patient with you, but you need to work in collaboration with one. So the doctor I work with, you know, uh, I couldn't say enough good things about him. He's really he really has kind of been working with me on my schedule so I can put in those training slots. Um, so yeah, I work full time. Good for you, man. And, and, ma- and making it all work. Um, and sort of my last sort of question about your, you know, so the early parts of your career, I imagine you were a fan of fighting, like fan of the UFC. Who were some of your, your fighters that you enjoyed watching? Yeah, I'd say when I first started, uh, people would ask me all the time, like, oh, did you see that fight? And I didn't, I didn't really honestly know who any UFC fighters were. I'd say probably my, uh, you know, the number one, number one guy when I first got started was probably GSP just because I I was a wrestler. He was a dominant wrestler. Um, I knew some people that trained with him. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so I'd say GSP was probably like the number one guy I was looking at. And obviously as a Canadian GSP was my favorite fighter too. So there you go. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is nuts, man. This is crazy. And by the way, just quick side note here. So, um, before I knew of like about you, I just saw that you had fought for cage warriors. And when we were setting up this interview, I'm telling people kind of behind the curtain here, but, uh, I thought you were from the UK just because you fought for cage warriors so much. And obviously they do the shows there. Cause I figured, especially with the last name, like Lynch, which is Irish, that's where my uh, ancestors are from or whatever. I figured slam dunk, but no, you're from the West coast. Like I am, which is cool. So there we go. Um, let's talk. San Diego recently yeah. so they're, they're trying to make it like a United States hub I think but well which is good for you as well the platform of everything course. and just the brand name too I mean how many fight Conor McGregor fought for cage warriors you know like it's yeah it's a prestigious promotion which is uh, awesome yeah. um so what do you know about your opponent here Cesar Gonzalez he's a eight fight veteran uh, how do you feel like you match up against him in this one so I think I match up with him very well um what I do know from him is um he's tough that's really it's really the biggest attribute I think he has his last fight he actually went out there had a three-round war um, ended up breaking his breaking his I think his I don't know his ankle or his leg. Um, ended up actually winning the split decision. I think he broke the his leg in like the first round. So you know he's game and he's tough and he's gonna he's he's gonna bring it until you you know you get rid of him. But you know again you can be as tough as you want if somebody you know put your lights out or put you to sleep. It doesn't really matter. So I think it's a I think it's a good matchup for for me because I think overall I'm just I'm a better fighter. Really. Does the game plan change a bit knowing how durable he is just in the fact that maybe you don't want to overexert yourself or is it still the same game plan? No, 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 no. Yeah. There's, I'm not trying to hold back. So I'm not, I'm going to go out there, the same game plan, gun slinging, put him away. You know, like, like everyone always says, we don't get paid overtime. So. Exactly. Or you don't get paid by the hour. So there you go. This is great. Um, training camp. We're, exactly. It doesn't matter either way. We, we know what you meant. And uh, as far as training camp, where are you training right now? And who are some of your main training partners? 
So where I'm training at right now is actually in Pacific Beach. It's in San Diego. Um, Chris Lieben actually opened up a gym. It's called The Training Center. So oh, it's cool. right down the street from my house. Um, my number one partner I've been working with, his name is Jordan Bailey. Um, he's actually fighting on the Cage Warrior card too. So, and he's the same weight. So we've been having some, some really good training sessions. He's my number one guy um, that I've been working with. Some other guys I've been working with at the gym. Uh, I, don't, I don't know his last name. His name's Blair. I think last name's like Shiloh or something like that. Okay. This kid named uh, Chris uh, Widowski. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And then obviously I'm down here in San Diego. So there's a plethora of uh, high level MMA guys. So I actually work with the Alliance guys pretty frequently. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So I work with Jeremy, Lil Heath and Steven a lot. So we should yeah. be actually meeting up this Friday for some sparring. Oh, cool. You ever play golf with Jeremy? I hear he's pretty good. No, I haven't played golf with Jeremy. I have not. So, but I would. Are you, are you a golfer at all? Uh, you know, my friends do golf a lot and every now and then I'll go out there and hang out with them, but I wouldn't say I'm the, the best golfer, but oh, I you got to get into it. I, I took, I took so many years off and then I got back into it last year and it's, it's, it's been amazing. I'm so glad I got back into it. I know you, I mean, you got a million things to do so I can understand why uh, golf wouldn't be yeah, a priority, yeah. but just, just throwing it out there. That's good. Yeah, I know. It's fun though. So. That's cool, man. So uh, you mentioned Jeremy. Is there anyone else at Alliance that you train with? And or Dwight Grant's there. There's a lot of really high level guys. Yeah. So it's really, I mean, Jeremy, I'd say is the number one guy because we fight the same weight. He's just always, he just brought, he just brings a lot of experience. He's, he's been really good for my overall game. Um, every now and then I'll mix it up with uh, Damon Wilson, actually. He, he's okay. fought on, he's fought on Cage Warriors a couple of times and Dominic Cruz. They actually have this up and coming guy that I recently was sparring with. I, I'm just trying to remember his Kalum. I think his name is Callum Parker. He's okay. actually fighting this weekend coming up. That guy, that kid's pretty tough. So keep an eye on him. I think he's going to do you know big things. I love talking to the prospects. Uh, what about the weight cut? You mentioned it being a catch weight. So probably not as much focus on that for this camp, right? Yeah. So that's the benefits. Like I've been fighting, you know, pretty frequently over this last year or so. So my weight's been pretty much controlled the whole time and I'm starting to get this weight cut thing dialed in. So I really have not been stressing about my weight at all. Granted, I'm still, you know, doing what I need to do, eating healthy, you know, things like that, especially with the extra five pounds. Uh, I'm not too worried about the weight cut. So everything's exactly where it needs to be. Love it. And what about your corner? Who's going to be in the cage with you that night? So in my corner, I'm going to have uh, my striking coach, Nestor Flores. Um, and then hopefully Chris Lieben will be in my corner. Um, mm -hmm. I think he has some other things going on, but if not, we'll, you know, we'll figure something out. So hopefully he'll make it in there. And I know people might get annoyed at me keeping bringing up these similarities, but no, I'm not even kidding when I say this. Chris Liebman's probably the reason I'm doing this. Like the first season of The Ultimate Fighter, I watched uh, his season and that's what got me into MMA. And I remember him specifically, that episode where he broke down the door when he's going after uh, Koscheck, like that for whatever reason, like I was like, what is this? And then I got completely hooked. So that's awesome uh, that, uh, that, that you get to be mentored by, by a guy like that. Yeah, he's got a plethora of knowledge. He's obviously been around the game basically since like you know modern MMA has started. So I couldn't be honestly more. I honestly, I feel like I'm you know really lucky to be in the situation I am with just everything going on. So I'm happy. How's this fight playing out on June 10th? I know you feel like you're going to get your hand raised. Otherwise, why sign the contract? But how do you envision it going down? So I envision um, him probably coming out, putting the pressure on because I mean, like you said, he's tough. He's durable. He tries to wear people down. But again, I think I'm uh, just got too many answers. I'll probably put him away honestly in the first first round. I don't, like I said, I don't get paid overtime. I don't want to go to the second. I don't want to go to the third. I've been having long fights lately and I'm not doing another one of those. Awesome. Um, you get this win here. I mean, that's the, the type of record that you see people uh, on contender series. Is that kind of what you're looking at next or what, what's sort of the plan? Because I know obviously you've done a couple fights for Cage Warriors. So I'm not sure if you're exclusive or not. You no, know, yeah. I mean, of course, that's, that's always a game plan. You know, I, you know, I'm in this to make it to the top and get to the UFC and be the UFC champion. If you're not in it to win it, then what are you doing it for? So obviously, you know, once I do get this win, um, hopefully I can get with my management. We can figure something out, maybe get on the contender series or maybe a last minute replacement. I don't know. Whatever it needs to do to get into the UFC, because that's my goal. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. That's great. Uh, what about hobbies outside of MMA? I know you don't have much going on uh, in terms of, you know, free time. That's what I meant. Obviously, you got a lot going on. Um, but uh, like, like, are you are you watching any Netflix? Are you a video game guy? What are you doing? You're probably going to the beach being in San Diego. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of mix it up a lot. But uh, one thing I do like doing, especially actually in the winter, surprisingly, is I do a lot of like lobster diving. So, like I said, oh, you're cool. in San Diego. So there's a certain time of the year between I think it's uh, it's between September or October and March where you can go uh, diving for lobster. So I don't know if you know, so the, the lobster down in Southern California, they're spiny lobster, so they don't have claws. So what you can do is you can go out at nighttime, they're crawling on the ground or in holes, you just go down, you can basically pluck them, like kind of like you're plucking a radish, you know? Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so I like, I like doing a lot of diving and spearfishing when I, when I have the chance to. 
That's awesome. Yeah, here uh, where I live in British Columbia, we do crab hunting, but it's not the same thing where like you just put the, the crab trap out and the crabs get caught in it and then you have some good crab. But it's uh, like I, I love seafood because being on this side of the, the world, you know, you get some really good stuff. So I imagine you're a steak and lobster guy, though, probably post fight, I would assume. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I do love doing steak and lobster, especially after the post fight, because, I mean, you got to douse it in that garlic butter because what do you eat lobster for without garlic butter? A hundred percent. Yeah, you're, you're speaking my language here, man. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, it was great talking to you, man. Finally, we made this happen. Uh, if there's anyone you'd like to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, so I think one person that I need to thank is uh, is actually my girlfriend. So um, over this last year or so, we've been in, I've been in camp, so she's basically been in camp with me this whole time, and I promised her a vacation. So I got to give a shout out to her for basically bearing and sticking with me throughout this whole thing, and I promise you we're getting a vacation. Um, I do want to thank one of my sponsors, Pain Consultants of San Diego. Um, so come down here if you ever need any PRP injections, steroid injections. We'll take care of what you need to. And then also my social media is Jamie underscore Lynch. Um, that's my Instagram. That's what I, and it's also my Twitter name as well. It's the same.